The question asks us to calculate the velocities of the two people after the snowball is exchanged. Now we have one person throwing the snowball and another person catching it. And what we can do to solve the question is analyze each person individually. So for example, we're going to focus our attention first on the thrower. And we know that initially the thrower is holding onto the snowball and she's kind of gliding to the right. And then she throws the snowball and our job is to figure out what her velocity is after she throws the snowball. Now, to do this, we're going to simply apply the law of conservation of momentum. Now, this tells us that the momentum of the thrower plus the momentum of the snowball initially, so we can put a little subscript initial here, will equal the momentum of the thrower plus the momentum of the ball finally. So it's basically initial total momentum is equal to final total momentum. But to make this more calculationally useful, we're going to expand the momentum expressions. So for the thrower, we would say the mass of the thrower multiplied by the velocity of the thrower, and then add that to the mass of the snowball times the velocity of the snowball. And again, these are the initial conditions. We'll have the same expansion on the right side, except under final conditions. So let's go ahead and write it out. And then at this stage, it's simply a matter of plugging in the known values. The mass of the thrower was given as 65 kilograms. We will omit units presently for clarity. The initial velocity of the thrower was 2.5 meters per second. The mass of the snowball was 0.045 kilograms. And the snowball also was moving at 2.5 meters per second because the thrower was holding on to it initially. And then on the other side, we take the mass of the thrower, multiply that by the unknown velocity of the thrower, and then add that to the mass of the snowball, multiplied by the velocity with which the snowball was thrown, and that was 30 meters per second. Now, we could pick up our calculators and sort of simplify the left-hand side. And when we do that, we get 162.6125. On the other side, we have 65 times V sub T. Let's multiply the 0.045 times 30, and we get 1.35. Now, of course, we can subtract both sides by 1.35 next. On the left-hand side, we have 161.2625. And then to cap this off, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 65. This will give us the velocity of the thrower after she throws the ball. And we end up with approximately 2.48. This is a velocity, so we return to meters per second. This is the final velocity of the thrower after she releases the ball. Now let's take a look at the scenario from the perspective of the person catching the ball. So it's basically the same kind of setup. We're still going to set the initial momenta of the ball and the catcher equal to the final momenta of the ball and the catcher. A couple of important points to keep in mind is that the initial velocity of the catcher was zero. He was stationary. So because the initial velocity of the catcher is zero, we're going to be able to actually knock out this term right here because if your velocity is zero, you have no momentum either. Another thing to notice is that once the catcher catches the ball, he is moving in tandem with the ball. So what that means is that the final velocity of the catcher and the final velocity of the ball will be the same because they are moving together almost as a single object. So you don't want to use two separate labels for that velocity. Why don't we just kind of reduce it to just a V for velocity, because again, that velocity is equal. Now, otherwise, we can begin to plug things in. We have the mass of the ball multiplied by the incoming velocity. Now, remember, the thrower threw the ball at 30 meters per second. So you're going to put 30 in for that incoming velocity of the ball as it approaches the catcher. And then on the other side, we have the mass of the catcher, which, which was 60 kilograms times V plus the mass of the ball, which is 0 0.045 kilograms times V. Notice on the right-hand side, those are like terms, so you can actually add them together to get 60.045 V. On the left side, we just multiply 0 0.045 times 30, and we're going to get 1.35. And then finally, to solve for the velocity of the catcher, as well as the ball, technically, we will divide both sides of this by 60.045 canceling it out on the right-hand side. And when we do this, we will get a velocity of the catcher, as well as the ball, of 
5. This is another velocity, so this is also in meters per second. That is the velocity of the ball and the catcher and the final answer to this problem.